J-O-B. What does it stand for? Just over broke. If you are relying on a job, you will always be just over broke. You've got to have plan B, C, D, E, and F these days, okay? Do not rely on any employer to take care of you more than you can take care of yourself. If the job is the main thing, you're going to get screwed at some point, okay? Have a job and a side hustle. Make a way to be a money magnet. Everybody, welcome back to Crafted Entrepreneur. Today, I'm going to do a wiki solo episode We're going to talk about the eight challenges that people have when it comes to their finances. I know personally, I've probably struggled with every single one of these challenges I've personally struggled with, to be completely honest. And the reason why it's important to talk about challenges is because you need to know you're not alone. And if you're in any of these situations right now, but what I want to do by the end of this episode is give you a clear path of something you could do differently so you could start getting different results. We talk about what is the number one stressor that people have in their lives right now. It's finances. It's people feel a lack, like they don't have enough. We're talking to the people who, you know, we might, you know, struggle with this on a daily basis. And I want you to just really leave with some practical tips today. Okay. So a lot of people, you find it difficult to, first of all, create a budget. And then the hardest part is to actually stick to a budget. And you go, okay, you know, I've created this budget. I know I have, you know, $5,000 I could spend a month, but how am I going to track every single expense when it's really easy to just swipe the card without thinking and overspend? We are in the age of impulsive buying. Just when you scroll Instagram, you just scroll a little bit and somebody's selling something to you. All you have to do is have a click and your card's already loaded and you have spent the money. You feel no pain, all gain. And so you keep doing it all the time because you get these dopamine hits. So I'm telling you right now, budgets are what I like to call alignment plans are going to be a very powerful tool for taking you out of the finance struggle and helping you start to win and feel empowered around your lifestyle. So I want to tell you exactly how I set up my alignment plan. First of all, you need to go and figure out what is the amount of income I can count on every single month. So I used to mess up with this because I go, well, if I hit all my goals this month, I'm going to be you know, $100,000. Then what happens when you don't hit that goal? And then you're screwed because you spent like you had that big income. So I want you to actually make your alignment plan out of your worst case scenario. So the fixed income that you know that you could count on, that's actually what your alignment plan needs to be created out of. And then go line by line. There are different apps out there that you could use. I personally just use a Google spreadsheet to help me keep track of everything that we're like have to spend every single month. So then I put in fixed expenses on the left-hand side. And I want you to think this is your mortgage or your rent, your car payments, your utilities, the food that you will be buying at grocery stores, your health. Maybe you have to pay for your health care. I know we have a lot of cars, a lot of car payment is, is a lot over there. So just list it all out. And then what are you left with? Are you left with anything? If you're not left with anything, then well, you've got to make a change, okay? You got to start making some more money or or you got to decrease your expenses. But we all know it's not fun to decrease the basic living expenses. It's not fun like to do that. So you got to go and be resourceful and say, okay, how do I add in another stream of income? And I'm actually hosting an event and you could just go to kaylacraft.com forward slash profit. And I'm hosting a three-day event all around how to take your idea, take your expertise and turn it into profit. It's going to be absolutely amazing. So just head over to that website, click the link. You can register for free and it's going to be three days of learning really how to build multiple streams of income. So that's what I want you to do if you're struggling with, first of all, just meeting that alignment. Now, the second thing around an alignment plan is you've got to understand it takes discipline. If you have never lived by a plan, you're not going to stick to it 100% of the time right away. You're just not going to because you got to build up the muscle. So what you need to do is give yourself more of a gray area when it comes to your alignment plan. So this is something you've got to be thinking about if you are not sticking to it 100% of the time. You've got to add cushion into separating your finances. It's really, really helpful. I do all different types of bank accounts because 
because of the fact that if everything was in one account, I get super excited and I'm like, I'm gonna spend it all. There's so much here. But if you have it spread out against like 16 different accounts like I do, you go, oh, wow, okay, I need to use this sparingly. Let's move on to the second challenge that you might be having in your finances and that's debt management. I ask people, what stresses you out? Why do you wanna start a business? And everybody I talk to says, well, I wanna pay off my credit card debt. Well, I wanna pay this off. I wanna pay this healthcare bill off. Wow, it's a huge burden that people are carrying and it's a very big challenge for people because you know we got the alignment plan up here that most people are barely hitting that. They're barely surviving on that. And then you add the mountain of debt that people get themselves in. You know, it's really hard because they're balancing multiple debts such as credit card debt over here, student loans, mortgages. And it's like, oh my gosh, which one do I pay first if I only have so much? Okay, it can be extremely stressful. And so my practice when it comes to debt is to thank the debt first because a lot of us could get really mad. Like the debt did something mean to us. But I'm sorry, if you have student loan debt, it's because you got to go to college, right? And probably met your spouse in university and you learned all of these amazing things there. And let's did you a service for a certain time of, in your life. Okay, I'm thankful for this student loan debt. I'm thankful for this credit card debt. I'm thankful for this mortgage. What happens when we become grateful? What happens? We go, oh my gosh, it's dopamine, dopamine. We get happy and we start to have an empowered perspective around the idea. And that's what I want you to take away when it comes to debt management is you always have a choice. It's not a mountain of debt that's crushing you. You can be on top of the mountain of debt. And the first thing you need to do is gratitude. The second thing you need to do is create a plan. This is very simple. Create a plan to get out of the debt. And if you keep doing the same thing you've always done, which is probably pay the minimum payments, you're never going to get out of that mountain of debt. It, it's just not going to happen. What we need to do is create a plan to actually make more money so you could pay off that debt quicker. Again, making more income is the quickest way to get out of that. So we want to have that resourceful mindset, be empowered around it, be grateful. Let's move on to the third challenge when it comes to finances. I used to really struggle with saving money because I grew up in a home where money burned a hole in my stepdad's pocket. As soon as he got paid every other Friday, it was gone by Monday morning. And he was scrounging, trying to pick up job, whatever you call him, he was an electrician. And so he would always do doing things to try to like make more money. And my mom was always picking up another client to do their hair so we could pay the bills on time. It was crazy. They had good jobs, but we just could not even pay our bills on time because they had that mindset. Hey, I'm going to live my life on the weekends, you know? And a lot of us have that because we're living for today and we're not focused on the long term and where we are headed. So I'm not saying to not enjoy your life. I definitely want you to enjoy your life. I think the more you enjoy your life and take care of yourself, the better output you're going to have, which means you're going to make more money. This is another challenge I see people, especially women, and it makes me crazy mad here. The lack of financial literacy. You guys, we're in a day and age where you can just turn on YouTube and learn everything you need to know about finances. You're listening to this podcast right now because you're going, hey, I want to increase my financial literacy. I want to understand finances. But what most people do is they say, well, oh, I just hired a financial advisor. And I'm like, that's cute. That's how I lost a lot of money was hiring a financial advisor and thinking that they knew better than me what to do with my money. Now, if Ray Dahlia would take me on as a client, I would hand over all of my money in a heartbeat, but I don't have enough money to give to Ray Dahlia. There's some people that like, yes, I would let them handle it, but most of these guys have a college education and no real life experience to be actually advising you on your finances. So you're listening to this podcast, you're learning. Another great person I highly recommend is Chris Harder. He teaches people how to make sound financial decisions. He gives us sound advice when it comes to investing. And he has an amazing podcast, The Chris Harder Show. You guys can listen in. But go and get educated. Ask questions. Go and look at podcasts and just put in to the search. Put interest rates. Put credit scores. Put investment strategies into the search bar in the podcast. App. And you will see a ton of knowledge come up for you. Actually remember some of it. Okay? So get educated, my friends. Now, the fifth challenge when it comes to finances is unexpected expenses. It's kind of like the perfect storm, but it's all happening to teach you something. When your finances are being rocked, it's because God wants to get your attention. But having a lack of emergency savings is really going to be challenging for you. That might be where you go back to, how do I get 
another stream of income going right now? Where is it that I can get resourceful and start to make more happen with less, okay? But again, remember, if you can get that six months of living expenses in a savings account, you don't need to worry about it, okay? Also, I say have a whole life insurance policy. Talk to Jack Waldron. You know, I've had him on the show before. Remember, this is after you have already maxed out your retirement accounts. You max out your retirement accounts, and then you can open up an infinite banking account using a whole life insurance policy. And guess what? If you do have a huge trial, let's say, you know, the six months ain't even gonna cut it of savings. Like you have a healthcare scare. That is what the whole life insurance policy is good for because you can pull out against that. So it's smart to understand these things and talk to educated people that are actually gonna help you. All right, this is the thing I get the most excited about is the sixth challenge, inadequate income, okay? You don't make enough to survive and you surely probably don't make enough to thrive, okay? J-O-B, what does it stand for? You guys should know this by now because I've drilled it in for the last five years, just over broke. If you are relying on a job, you will always be just over broke. You've got to have plan B, C, D, E, and F these days, okay? Do not rely on any employer to take care of you more than you can take care of yourself, okay? Now, I'm not saying having a job is a bad thing. If the job is the main thing, you're going to get screwed at some point, okay? Have a job and a side hustle. Make a way to be a money magnet. You've got to start thinking like that, right? If I'm a money magnet, what are all the ways that I can bring money into me today, you know? Well, having a personal brand is one of the top ways to be a money magnet because you get paid for just being yourself. So use what you have, sell what you love. That's a top way that you can start making more money and beat these financial challenges head on. The seventh challenge that I see people make is emotional spending and lifestyle inflation. Now, did I fall into this trap for so many years in network marketing? Absolutely. I was making a ton of money in the network marketing industry and I was speaking at all of these events. I had to speak on all of these stages and they were always doing photo shoots for us. And I always saw the top leaders, they always had different outfits and they had stylists and all the stuff. So I said, oh, that's what I need to do because I'm making money. I'm gonna be a top leader one day. So I need to start having a new outfit every day. So I started to inflate my lifestyle style. So let's say I was making 30 grand a month, but I was spending 30 grand a month to keep up with the lifestyle of making 30 grand a month. You know what I'm saying? It was crazy. And I started to question the things I had been doing in my life. Why do I put so much pressure on myself to be the best, to have the best, to look a certain part? That was just one of my rock bottom moments. Okay. But we have to have those moments to figure out what matters. And that's a conversation you need to have with yourself right now and say, does the stuff matter? Does the having the latest Instagram viral look from Amazon Prime matter. If it does to you, well, you're at a different season in your life, okay? And work harder so you can afford those things. But if it doesn't really matter to you, start selling everything that has you. Start making the priority of your mental health, your physical health, your happiness a priority. And then you'll go check your bank account and make sure that those priorities are being shown in your bank account. The last thing I'm gonna talk about is the lack of financial planning, okay? A lot of people, even people that make a lot of money aren't necessarily the best financial planners because they're too much into that category. Well, just make more money. Well, just make more money. And then you're on the rat race all the time of trying to make more and more money. But when you figure out what it is that you really want, where do you see yourself in five years? Where do you see yourself in 10 years? And I know that's a really hard concept because you're like, I don't know where I'm going to be in 10 years. But for me, I think five years from now, I'm going to have an 18 year old, a 16 year old and a 13 year old. And where do I want to be with them? So if you're a parent listening in right now, it can be very clear for you where you want your finances to be. If I have two kids in high school and one in middle school, I need to be spending every waking moment that they are home with. And I need to have a lot of freedom. I need to have a lot of passive income coming in so I can be with them and I don't have to answer to all of the other things. So I have built my life for those moments. And I think ahead, how do I build up more passive income? What do I need to invest in today? You know, I'm constantly looking for deals to get invested in. I've even changed the way that I bring on my private clients because I'm not just looking for a flat fee anymore. I'm looking for longevity in passive income. And I want you to start thinking like that too. Where do I see myself and how do I want my life to be? Like what is going to feel the most fulfilling for me? And if you've got passive income that pays for your lifestyle expenses, you will be financially free. And that is a place where you can really build from, then come, you know, rich, build your net worth. There's a lot of growth that can happen from that place. But your first goal should be to become financially free. And if you take these eight challenges and you really go, okay, how do I over 
overcome these, start building a plan out today, your life is going to look not only different in one year, but how much different is it going to be five years from today if you overcome these obstacles now? So I want you to feel empowered. It wasn't always this way. I wasn't the person teaching people this 10 years ago. I've learned this by trial and error. I've learned it from making actually a lot of mistakes when it comes to finances. That's again why I say these are ideas for you and my personal experience. So the most powerful thing you can do is go get educated, get disciplined, and start taking action. Thanks so much for listening in today.